jQuery, a JavaScript library used for simplified HTML DOM manipulation, easier event handling, and makes it easier to create animations and perform AJAX. The DOM, or the Document Object Model, is basically how every element on a web page is organized. Think of it as a family tree with parents and children and all. People used jQuery back in the day because it seemed much more user-friendly than vanilla JavaScript, as it was much easier to learn and understand. The syntax was just so simple, and like I said before, this easy on the eyes syntax made doing Ajax or asynchronous JavaScript a lot easier. jQuery started to fall in use at the advent of the ECMAScript 6 standard, or ES6. Soon after, JavaScript frameworks for building websites started to become more popular. Although, don't get mistaken, many, many websites still use jQuery to this day. Polymer, a JavaScript library made by Google to build reusable web components. A web component is a particular piece of code that represents an element on the web page, such as a button, or a list, or a navigation bar, or a jumbotron, or a carousel. The purpose is to make these reusable and modular, so that adding it to a web page becomes very simple, and you don't have to code the same thing over and over again. Web components make use of something called a shadow DOM, which is its own particular element specific to that particular web component. This makes it so that anytime something updates on the web component, only that particular section of the web page gets reloaded and not the entire page. MooTools, a JavaScript library, much like jQuery, is used for DOM manipulation, event handling, and Ajax. It's used for very similar purposes that jQuery is used for, although the syntax is slightly different. Masonry. This helps you build grids and, well, masonries on your website. It allows you to build a column-based grid layout and add animations, be able to customize, and add sorting and filtering to images and optimize for space on the web page for beautiful design. 3JS, a library for 3D modeling and 3D animation. It uses a JavaScript API called WebGL in order to render 3D objects right in the web browser. Not only can you create 3D objects, but you can also import them from other programs such as Blender. 3JS is usually used to build 3D games, data visualization, and even sometimes VR and AR. GreenSock, also known as the GreenSock Animation Platform is a JavaScript library known for high-performance animations. Basically, anything you can manipulate with JavaScript can be animated with GreenSock, down to HTML, SVGs, Canvas elements, and more. It also works seamlessly with JavaScript frameworks such as React, Vue, and Angular. It also used to be a library for ActionScript. You know, the language that was used for Flash. Ah, <sighs> Flash. Those were the days. D3.js, also known as Data Driven Documents, is an extremely robust JavaScript library for data visualization. You think of it, charts, plots, graphs, and even animations, interactive dashboards, and manipulating complex data can all be done with just a few lines of code. D3 is most known for creating and manipulating SVGs. Chart.js, a JavaScript library used to create the most complex AI and machine learning algorithms in the world, making use of complex linear algebra. Okay, no, I'm, ju I'm just kidding, all right. I mean, come on. It's in the name. It lets you create line charts, bar charts, pie charts, donuts, scatter plots, and they're made to be responsive so they can fit on any screen size. Animate on scroll, also known as AOS, it's a JavaScript library that allows you to animate things on scroll. They look good though. Yeah, that's pretty much it. AnimeJS, a powerful and lightweight JavaScript library for animation. You start by linking an animemin.js file in your web page, and from here, you can animate anything that you see on the screen. You can animate any element on the page. You can select by classes or ID. You can even use your code to utilize frame-perfect editing on your animations. You can also adjust the easing and duration. Video.js, this lets you put full-screen video backgrounds on your website. You can even add text overlays and controls. It's great for landing and home pages. Plotly, a library for creating charts and data visualization that can update in real time. You can zoom, pan, hover over data points, and perform other actions to explore the data. It also has cross-platform and language support, and you can create many types of charts just like the other libraries. Brain.js, a way to do machine learning and AI in JavaScript. You start by including Brain.js into your project to 
start creating neural networks. Creating a neural network is basically teaching a computer how to learn. First, you feed it some training data, like pictures of cats. Those go into something called an input layer. Then, that information passes through the network called the hidden layer. This handles the information that teaches the neural network what to look for, such as pointy ears and whiskers. Then, the final result comes through something called an output layer. Brain.js is used for pattern recognition, text analysis, and simple prediction. TensorFlow.js TensorFlow is usually known as a Python library, but there's also a JavaScript version of it. Although it's not as powerful as it has to run in the browser, where the Python version can make use of powerful CPUs and GPUs. Nonetheless, it's a very good machine learning library. It's capable of image recognition, prediction models, natural language processing, and powers self-driving cars. You input data into something called a tensor, hence the name. A tensor is basically a multi-dimensional array. Imagine a shopping list as a one-dimensional array, and a chart with columns and rows as a two-dimensional array. You can actually organize information in higher dimensions than this, and those are usually called tensors. Socket.io, a library that enables real-time, bi-directional communication between users and web servers. It mainly uses web sockets to work. Have you ever wanted to create your own live chat or live streaming app or collaborative editing program? Well, Socket.io is the way to go. PDF.js. This lets you create a custom PDF viewer with JavaScript for your website. It mainly does it by using the HTML canvas. You can also use it to manipulate PDF documents. Node.js. A very popular JavaScript runtime environment that lets you run JavaScript on a web server. You see, before Node, it was more common for server-side languages to be PHP or Java. But Node.js is able to work because it's built on top of the V8 JavaScript engine, the same engine that runs on Chrome. This presents an opportunity for JavaScript developers to become full stack. Node.js can also handle doing asynchronous JavaScript, but most importantly, it comes with the Node Package Manager, more commonly referred to as NPM, which is a tool that allows you to install and manage libraries and modules. Granum.js, used for fluid and smooth gradient animation with the HTML canvas element. You can control how many colors it has, animation directions, color scheme, everything to make the design of your website stand out. Deno, a modern runtime environment for JavaScript and TypeScript. Created by the same person who made Node.js, it's made to run JavaScript and TypeScript on a web server. But how it differs from Node.js is that it emphasizes security because programs made in Deno do not access file systems or network without permission. Also, like I said before, it also supports TypeScript. Although Deno doesn't have a package management system like Node does. Ionic, a UI toolkit for building progressive web apps, desktop apps, and mobile apps. It allows for cross-platform development including iOS, Android, and the web. It comes with pre-built UI components such as lists, buttons, forms, navigation, and it can be integrated with JavaScript frameworks such as React. Vite, a front-end build tool that makes building JavaScript websites a whole lot faster. It's made by the same person who made Vue.js. The word Vite means fast in French, and true to its name, that's the main purpose. You can start in your command line tool of choice and start by selecting a vanilla JavaScript project or the choice of multiple other frameworks. Then within seconds you are ready to go. For example, before Vite, in order to start up a React project, you would have to use the create react app command through the node package manager. And if you've ever experienced that, you know it can take a while. It does all of this by using native ES modules, which is a modern JavaScript standard. It also supports TypeScript and has a feature called Hot Module Replacement, which basically allows you to see changes in your code reflected in your website updated in real time without reloading the page. Gatsby, a static site generator mainly for React but can also be used in vanilla JavaScript. This means it can pre-build websites into static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript during the build process. Gatsby powers many blogs, e-commerce sites, portfolio sites, and it's very plug-in friendly. Jest, a JavaScript testing tool mainly used for React, but can also be used for other JavaScript projects. It's mainly known for unit testing. Unit testing is a way of testing your code piece by piece so that you can make sure each part of your program runs correctly before deploying the entire thing. Other features include creating snapshots of UI components for testing and comparing and isolating code to be tested. Mocha, a JavaScript testing framework that runs on Node.js and in the browser. It's useful for unit testing, integration testing, and end-to-end -end testing. It's known for asynchronous testing, 
which is testing for asynchronous code that is responsible for network requests and database interactions. React, a very popular UI framework and library for building websites. React is mainly used for the front end of the website, which is basically the part of the website the user interacts with. Its main feature is that it makes use of reusable code called components. These components can be buttons, text boxes, images, menus, navigation. Not only are components reusable, but they're modular as well, fitting in smoothly with many other React projects. React is written in a language called JSX, which basically looks like a fusion between HTML and JavaScript. React also comes with its own set of libraries, such as Redux and React Router. Vue. Much like React, it's a JavaScript library used for building UI components. However, it's not as popular, although it tends to be a little bit faster in performance. Angular. Same as the last two, it's used to build UI components, although Angular is designed for bigger and enterprise-level projects. Svelte. Yes, and much like the last three, Svelte is used for building UI components in JavaScript. However, the main difference from the previous three is how it renders pages. The other frameworks I mentioned before use something called a virtual DOM or DOM to render web pages, while Svelte uses a compiler. This results in faster performance and smaller file sizes. Express.js, a framework for building APIs or application programming interfaces. An API is basically how two different programs can exchange information. If you've ever tried to log in with your Google account, this is done with an API. Next.js, a back-end JavaScript framework used for search engine optimization. It also helps your website perform faster by making use of server-side rendering, which is basically rendering the website on the web server before sending it out to the end user. Nest.js, a framework for building server-side applications. It's built on top of Node.js. It allows you to create applications using WebSockets, create RESTful APIs, and handle the security of your website. Although it's not for JavaScript, it's for a language called TypeScript. TypeScript is basically a superset of JavaScript. It's basically JavaScript with some extra features that make coding more reliable. JavaScript is very flexible, but sometimes that can run into problems. TypeScript is more strict, and one of the ways it does this is by using static typing. You see, imagine you have a function that's supposed to add two numbers, and you accidentally pass one of them as a string and the other as a number. JavaScript would just do something weird or just send you back an error. However, with TypeScript, you can catch errors like this before you even run the code. Nuxt.js, a framework built on top of Vue.js. Vue.js is a framework that focuses on building the front end of a website. Nuxt is a framework that handles the back end. Nuxt is capable of server-side rendering, static site generation, data fetching, or anything else needed to be a full-stack Vue developer. Be sure to share this video, and thanks for watching.